Now is your time to flex. What up, everybody, and welcome back to another edition of the 13th Floor, brought to you by the motivators at Fledgeology, who are committed to exposing you to the potential of your dreams so you can get out of your comfort zone and take that leap to that purpose-driven life. Of course, I'm your host, B. Jones, the moderator, and today I'm joined by T.I., the intern, J. Dace. What's happening? Hey, what's going on, bud? We got the CMO, Faison. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, wherever you are in the world. And our prolific one, Carol, what's going on, bro? I'm good. I'm excited um, about this podcast, for one, because I'm actually in a room next to Faison. So we definitely normally bring two different types of energy to the podcast so it's going to be very interesting the, the feud and the battle that we have going on over here versus <laughs> what everybody else has to yeah oh, i yeah. might cut him off and jump in between something and jump back out again hey man you know that's that's his role man he kind of pushes you you know stays on your back and everything <laughs> how is it in atlanta uh it's good man except yeah. it's cold here yeah, man. Bruh. It's like 40 something degrees this morning. Well, you know, well, I can't say cold because you guys know I'm up in Jersey, so it's not cold, cold, but I am upset that I'm not able to come down here in a t shirt and uh, and flip flops. So that was a letdown. Thank you, Atlanta. So, so, yeah, so when I say. Oh, go ahead. Go ahead. When I say cold, I mean, it's cold for Atlanta. Like, they got on scarves and long coats right. and stuff like that. And we're, we're still walking around jeans and a t-shirt <laughs> and people looking at us like crazy all right you know in the south cold is when it gets to 50 degrees you know what i'm saying like they don't understand yeah, man. but <laughs> yeah like like they got weather alerts cover your flowers cover your flowers <laughs> but listen man so i'm in maryland and yeah i grew up in virginia but I lived in Miami for a very long time. So I was not used to this bipolar weather, man. Just, I don't, I want to say last week, it was not even last week, a day or two ago, it was 70 degrees. Outside. <laughs> when I tell you, yeah, man. like yesterday, it was snowing and it is now <laughs> 20 degrees. Just two days ago, it was 70 degrees outside. And I'm looking at my lady is like, this wasn't this this wasn't part of the contract. Like we didn't we didn't explain this when we talked about this dental school move. Like I, I didn't I'm this is pneumonia weather. Like this is ridiculous. <laughs> yeah, well get ready for Tuesday get ready for Tuesday. Just gonna have the big Narisa coming your way too. So you might not get as much, but I'm gonna get I'm gonna get buried. And it's crazy because she was saying like so when it started warming up and you know the winter has been like frigid cold at times up here, like twenty tens or whatever. But we didn't have no big, really big snowstorm. And she was saying, oh, it's, it's one coming. I'm like, nah, man, it's like, it's mm-hmm. been 50, 60 for the last couple of weeks. It's springtime, man. I'm ready. I'm, I'm getting excited. The sun is out more because, you know, in Maryland, uh, the sun just disappears for months at a time. So I'm starting to get a little right. bit of my energy back and everything. And then I get slapped in the face with this 20 degree snowstorm yesterday. And now you're talking, we got another blizzard coming. So this this is not the groove. Yeah, yeah I, I wouldn't expect, expect uh, April is going to be cold too. Just so you just think about that. We had 73 weather in February. You can expect some 40s and 50s in April, even though it's normally, you know, springtime. It's going to be a just a, a adjustment. Just get ready for it. <laughs> yeah. Do I not mentally... put away his sweatshirts yet. <laughs> <laughs> Keep him out. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, man. So what's been going on, man? How, how's your week been, Jay? What's going on? Oh, man. It's been phenomenal. Um, like uh, my lady I'm talking to. You know, she came up for for the week, and uh, we just been hanging out, man. It's, it's, so it's been great, like just going out, seeing Virginia, and just hanging out. So it's funny that you that you spoke about the uh, weather thing because it was like fifty, probably about fifty, uh, I think Wednesday. And to me, I'm from Wisconsin, so that was cool to me. I was, you know, I was walking with a t-shirt on, and she sprinted to the car, like like we, because <laughs> <laughs> she's from Louisiana, so she we went from we we left out of the I think we went to a restaurant, and as soon as the door opened, she was like, oh no, <laughs> she took off running. <laughs> I was like, let me open the door. So, uh, but yeah, that's been that's what's been going on with me, man. Obviously, still trying to work and everything, but um, just enjoying time with her, man, for real. For real. Okay, where she's up from. Huh? Oh, Louisiana. Louisiana. Oh, okay. So, can she cook authentic Louisiana food? She better. <laughs> <laughs> he laughing, man. Dog, have, so that 
have yet to I ain't to even going to throw her in that, in that bunch of, you know, females. You know what I mean? Age, I have yet to experience it. Pro- progressive females. Nah, go ahead, go ahead, man. I'm hey, sorry to cut you off. Hey, listen, man. It, it, it is not about that before we lose half of our female listeners. That's not what's going on. I just want to know if she can cook authentic Louisiana food. So next time we're all together, hopefully you'll bring her, you know, that yeah. type of thing. And you know, if I see her pop out with a box of Zataran, oh, yeah, it's gonna be tight on her if she do that, man. No. No, I, I'm here to experience it, but she's spoken that she's, you know, she can cook, you know, authentic, you know, Louisiana food. Her mom's a phenomenal cook, so um, you know, I, when I let, when I know, you'll know. You know, what I mean, I got you. Hey, so, so you met you met mom already? No. Nah. Oh, okay. I'll just, I'll just, just. This is all, you know, this is all spoken, you know. This is all hearsay. Oh, okay. Yeah. Oh, okay. yeah. <laughs> oh, all right. All right. All right. All right. Hey, well, listen, man, you know, you know, my advice, man, you know, be, be who you are. Don't, don't, don't be somebody that's in the honeymoon phase and, you know, oh, yeah, all, of yeah, sudden, definitely. all of a sudden definitely. your room is clean and the, the picture on the wall behind you is hanging up straight. And then, you know, as soon as you leave, everything goes, you know, back to, the way it was so no man no definitely i mean that's something honestly i mean i don't not to get to it to the message you know what i mean before we get into the message but uh um, that's something i struggle with you know growing up man like not being yourself in the beginning because you know it's going to show in the end but if you just put your put your true self forward in the beginning then you know everything else is going to follow with it but you know not to, like i said not to go too far carol what's going on man how the week been and the week's been fine, man. Um, the week's flying. It just seemed like so much going. It seems like it was just yesterday we were taking pictures for for the photo shoot, and now it's 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 actually like two weeks later, right? Um, which is crazy. So time is flying. I'm telling you, man. You you, you can't wait to do the things that you want to do because that's how you just wake up and all of a sudden it's it's too late. Yeah. So you know. Good week, man. Excited about uh about where we are this weekend. We're out in Atlanta, um, and you know I I get the the, the free pub- pub- publicity out there. Um, you see, it made me stutter to even like give, give out you know, <laughs> give out the free you know the free marketing, the free advertising. But CMO and I we're we're at the Eric uh, Thomas uh, Stay Ready Tour. This is the kickoff. It's also the kickoff of their speaker training. So, you know, we always talked about investing in your 10,000 hours and, and and investing in your craft. So that's why we're here. We're here to learn from the, the best in the world. So we're excited to hang out with E.T., C.J., Carl, and the crew. Uh, shout out to those guys. And uh, before the, the weekend's over, we're going to gain many more followers of the podcast. So shout out to B.U. and everybody that's here this weekend. Yes, sir. Yeah, man, that's definitely a great opportunity to network. And like you said, just investing that time into your craft, man, is very important. So I know you will take full advantage of that that situation. Oh, absolutely. CMO, Faison. Uh Just in case people yes. didn't, didn't know, yeah, art is Faison. You know, we had a, a sort of a, <laughs> uh, I don't know, I don't know if we want to call it come to Jesus moment or whatever. You know, he went some, he went soul searching and decided, oh, Faison is definitely the, the better alternative of you know introducing myself so so phase on is art so no confusion there yes yes they didn't, they didn't replace me <laughs> <laughs> i i'm still here uh the, the the week's been great man i i definitely enjoy um you know, i'm living my life like the uh marvel superhero squirrel girl i can't be stopped i got the, the, the luck factor right now um it's pretty awesome in the mindset of her, yeah, yes, you guys t- took it the wrong way. So let me explain. Before Not even that. Deep. Hold on. Before you explain Squirrel Girl, once again, we are showing age, ladies and gentlemen, on the 13th floor. Maybe not. I don't know, because I'm not a, a comic book geek or whatever, but Jay scratched his head. I saw it. So he's here, he's here with me. And Squirrel Girl, I, I don't know, man. What is that, like tier, tier three, tier four? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Squirrel, Squirrel Girl, actually, she, she's starting to get her... Um, her like livelihood through Spider-Man mm-hmm. um, and through the new, the new Angel Spider-Man XD and all those new things that are there but she's been around for probably since the 90s or so um, not a big character not really big but she's the one the one superhero that's beaten all the super villains so hey, tell, um, all right tell her tell everybody what uh, her superpower is 
she controls yeah, the power. Yeah, tell me about her. Yeah, I mean, so, I know so, so Squirrel Girl controls the power of squirrels. She can talk to squirrels, and she has an unwritten and un um, levelable. Can't think of the word. Um, unmeasurable uh, factor of luck. So uh, her ability to defeat. Big bosses or big things or big anything outside, you know, she's just there. So, because, because luck is on her side. Uh, yeah, at all times. So, because that's on her side at all times. So, right now, like I said, I'm living my life. World. In and the she, world. Can, she can call them all. Any, any squirrel near her, talk to them. She can destroy and take things out. Um, and I say that I'm, I'm living my life in, in her character right now because, um, you know, it's been a great week. And I always feel that I have that luck factor on things that go well. Um, you know, coming down here, getting flights, uh, getting taken care of on the airline. You put out what you get. So I've been putting out great energy and, you know, I just been getting it back. So it's been a really good week. Uh, I was almost got a chance to go to my favorite theme park uh, down here in Atlanta, but uh, unfortunately, timing <laughs> won't work out well. Um, so that was, uh, that was a good part, but now it's not. But yeah, it's, it's just been, it's been good. So I'm living my life through the luck factor of Squirrel Girl. Um, so there you go. Hey, yeah. Real so Go ahead, man. Who, who will win, Squirrel Girl or Ant Man? Just out of curiosity, yeah. art or, or Squirrel, Squirrel Girl? Girl. She's beating Thanos, so just so you know, she's beating <laughs> Thanos. You can beat Thanos by yourself. You can defeat Ant Man. <laughs> <laughs> so, you know, it's funny. So some podcasts have, you know, challenges with sports analogies and references. <laughs> Their listener <laughs> audience may not be that much into sports. <laughs> But it seems like on the 13th floor, our child is going to be comic books and superheroes because <laughs> these deep conversations about them. <laughs> and I don't know if our, our 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 listening audience is with us, but just just stick with us. I promise you, we'll explain all the superheroes and all that stuff before it's over. So if you leave a comment about who is that, you'll get answers, and I'm sure it'll turn to a whole different conversation because us comic book guys tend to go deep. And we already take pride in uh, the education. <laughs> yeah, so, so I wanted to know, she can control squirrels. What about chipmunks? Not squirrels, they're cousins. Just, just she squirrels. Control squirrels. squirrels. I'm sure she can have them talk to the chipmunk, oh, but she controls is, squirrels. But Thanos is like borderline demigod. Like, exactly. I'm not, I'm not afraid of no squirrel if I'm not, you know, I got that kind of power. This is true, but neither elephants aren't afraid of mice until uh, mice crawls are crawling in the right spot. Ah, mm. Go somewhere with that. Mm. That was good. On that note, wow. I'm out, y'all. <laughs> <laughs> hey, man, we're going to get back to that because I think um, <laughs> what we actually want to get into today is kind of refuting that whole luck factor a little bit that you hinted at with Squirrel Girl. We're going to come back to that. But, uh, you know, so for me, this week has been pretty amazing. Um, on the just for the fact that i was able to be very uh productive but then some some crazy things happened along the way so the product the productivity factor was just not a whole lot of uh on like your days off and you got set plans to do certain things mm -hmm. but then you you get a nail in your tire or you got some something that just jumps in that just kind of throws all of that away so like didn't have that happen you know this week but my daughter's taekwondo master he made me go for it. So we have a new addition to the Jones family, and it's about 10 guppies. And I had no idea that it was going to be that many because this dude, he's like, oh, yeah, I'm trying to get rid of these fish. And of course, he tells the child first so to get the child excited. So the parent just can't say no. Right. Of course. <laughs> <laughs> so so he tells her about these fish and he explains to me, oh, yeah, it's just a couple of fish. You know, they'll be in a bag. You get a little tank, you know, fill it with water, feed them once or twice a day. You're good. I've never had any fish. So I'm just taking his word for it. That's the first mistake. So he doesn't bring the fish a couple of days. So I wait to get the tank because it's supposed to be some whole simple situation. When we finally get the fish, it's like 10 fish in this bag. And I'm like, whoa, this isn't what we discussed. But she, they're all in one bag. It's almost impossible to get them out of one bag to the other. So you just have to deal with the 10 fish. So she's all excited. I'm like, all right, let's go get the fish tank and everything. I get to Walmart to get the fish tank. And I call myself getting one of these all in one tanks or whatever that, you know, everything is included. But I'm also doing research on how to take care of these fish when I get there or while I'm on the way. Bruh, you got, first of all, you have to have a gallon of water for every fish, basically. That's the ratio. Mm -hmm. 
Yeah. They're a tropical fish, so the water has to be a certain temperature. You got to aerate mm-hmm. the water, so you need an air pump going in. Um, yep. You got to treat the water. Now, so my uncle had mm-hmm. fish when I was younger, but we had fish, the fish tank and everything. We had an algae eater, so I guess they ate yeah. everything in the tank or whatever that, you know, whatever. You got to treat the water, and I end up spending way more money than I expected. And on top of that, <laughs> the box with the tank and everything didn't come with certain stuff. So I made like two extra trips to get things that were supposed to be included uh, in this box. And I still have to go back and get like some LED lights to put on the top of the tank so that the fish can see at night so they don't, you know, get scared or whatever. But um, Right, because fish need to see at night because they can see in the ocean. Right. <laughs> exactly. But that's the box record. Right. Right, <laughs> because the moon lights up the whole. whole yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, man, that that in itself was crazy. But I mean, you add that to the parakeets and everything. So I'm working on a little zoo. Hey, so so I was just gonna say. So last year, <laughs> uh, for those of you that started listening last year, you all know that randomly, uh, Brett got some parakeets. So now this year you've got guppies. So what's next? What's the, what are you projecting is going to be next year? Because you're quickly turning in to, do- to Doctor Doolittle. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to go with I'm going to go with some kind of ferret or hamster it's, or yes, something it's in that mindset. Gonna be some type of rodent. I'm pretty sure it, it's going to be like no. a hamster. She's been talking about hamsters for a while, so I know as soon as Auntie Bunny gets a hold of that, because that's who got the, uh, the parakeets randomly for a birthday. Didn't say anything to anybody about it. Just shows up with a cage. Like, hey, here you go. Right. And they, like you can't give life away <laughs> as a gift. <laughs> Listen, man, you you need to be proactive and and, cut, and just cut off this whole thing. So you need to go out there and buy something that will make them not want to get anything else. That's what I'm saying. Like it's sweet. So exactly. So when I was at the job and I was telling the same story, I'm like, you know what? I'm finna go out and get a uh, dog on iguana. Or I can't do snakes. I'm I'm terrified of snakes. I, I'm not gonna do that. But I'm gonna go get a freaking iguana or something along those lines that gets like huge. You know what I'm saying? So they gotta have like some big ten gallon tank. And ain't nobody gonna want to bring anything else in there because if you let the birds out, the iguana probably gonna try to eat them. And you know he might jump in and try to get some of these fish as well. So I think that's my next thing. Yeah. Keep in mind though, they are expensive. That light bill is gonna go up with that uh, that heat lamp. I have one, so. Uh, if they're easy to maintain, you can forget about them for a couple of days, but uh, the lights got to be on, the heat's got to be on. And guess what? You'll never guess the lizard's name. What do you mean? It's uh, a, uh, his, his lizard. Oh. Uh, it, it, is, it, 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 is it a squirrel ahead. girl? No. <laughs> Xavier. 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 Yes, as in Professor X, <laughs> Professor Charles Xavier. <laughs> <laughs> Too deep, man. You got to keep it all connected like that. Uh, that's how it works, man. All connected. <laughs> <laughs> Easy, man. So going back to Squirrel Girl and her luck um, situation. So I don't know too much about Squirrel Girl. I don't know too much about Thanos and, you know, the battle royales that happen in the Marvel Universe or whatever. But you mentioned luck and then you also mentioned how that played, I guess, a significant piece into you know how well your week has been or how, how uh, productive you've been and i challenge that because for, um, one of the things that i've been thinking about and it's become more a major part in my life um really recently is uh living with intent and not to say you know you know living with a purpose or living for someone but living intentionally you know, not letting something happen or life doesn't just happen on accident. So when you mentioned, you know, she she had the advent, the advantage of luck on her side. You know, I would challenge that to say, you know, in the battle, I'm pretty sure she was doing specific things that actually have uh, beget specific reactions that along the course, you know, got her to, you know, the W. And, you know, in your life, you know, whether in business or just what you have going on, You've acted in specific ways to make specific things happen. So, you know, you, you started, you got your flights, you booked your flights early so that, you know, you got the best price. Um, you know, you got your hotel, you using points to make sure you get your best price. So you're, you're living with intent and not just saying, oh, life is going to happen or I just I'm getting these things by the luck of the draw. Oh, uh, uh, agreed. hundred percent. It's opportunity and preparedness at the same time gives you luck. 
Um, so luck is just the, uh, you know, you prepare for it. Opportunity is there. So if you can get that going, um, that luck factor is increased by a lot more. That's, that's, that's the quote. The quote is luck is when preparation meets opportunity. So if you're always prepared, which is funny, the name of the, the, the tour that we're at today is, is stay ready. Right. But if you're always prepared, when an opportunity comes along, you don't have to get ready or you don't have to get prepared because you're ready for it as opposed to opportunity comes along and you're not ready. That That's a theme that, you know, many motivational speakers, I, I've heard many people say it, so I don't know who, who the originator is, but the whole concept of living with intent is, look, I'm going to take action on what it is I desire, not knowing necessarily every step of the, every step of the way but as long as i start i'm going to get to the ultimate goal eventually so for example us coming to this conference and this speaker training look i hey i don't know if it's going to make team fledgeology better but the opportunity to get face time and spend time with number one speaker in the world there has to be some type of residual value that comes from that exactly so so I, I, I've put all stock in that and we made the investment. Hey, let's let's go do this. Right. We could have easily invested that money in something else that we don't even know what to do with yet. But obviously we're doing it with this and we know that this opportunity leads is going to lead to some preparation for us that's going to help us with opportunities later on. At the same time, this is that prep, too. So this is the prep for the opportunity. So this is, this is that two way street that we're working on now. Yeah, man, going back to. Uh what you were saying, it's funny how uh, it's like it's funny how the name of the of the, of the tour is "Stay Ready." Uh, something I heard actually ET say once was, uh, "It's not what happened to you that broke you; it's the fact that you weren't ready for what happened to you that broke you." You know what I mean? So it's not it's not what you dealt with or what you went through that was like the deciding factor of whether you should whether you succeeded or lost. It's the fact that you weren't prepared to deal with that properly. And I thought that when I heard that, man, I, that changed my whole level of thinking. Like, I changed my perspective about what I was going through. Because it's like, man, it had I been prepared to deal with this on a whole other level, it wouldn't have affected me in the level that it did. So I think that that was, um, that's like, that just kind of ties into, you know, staying ready. And when you when you stay ready, you're not going to get ready. I agree. And, and Brett, allow me to, to tell a, a quick story on, on uh, you know, preparation and, and luck and the whole factor as we go into the living with the, the intent. You know, and my, when I was, I would say probably 26 years old, I had the opportunity to buy into a company when it was on its, its low end. Um, but I wasn't ready for it. So my mindset was, was to, oh, I'm in Miami. I'm going to live like a Miami. I'm going to spend all this money and buy all these things and do all this. And, you know, I don't need to go, um, you know, buy this, go buy this company because I'm not going to live there. Um, and looking back in hindsight, that opportunity came. And I told myself that I would never, ever again allow myself not to be able to jump on opportunity when it comes my way. I'll be prepared at all times. And I've lived my life through that process the entire time so that when something does arrive, something comes up, I'm ready to go, um, you know, wherever it may be. So that's that's just the, the thing, you know, you, you learn from your mistake. You learn not from a mistake, you learn from opportunity. Experience is your best way of learning. Uh, just live through experience and the things will never happen to you again that you allowed to happen back before. Right. And in that, you know, situation, some people would say that, oh, that was just, you know, life happening. You know, it is what it is. You know, stuff happens like that all throughout life. You have those type of decisions or adversities. But in actuality, you know, I'm a strong, stronger believer in cause and effect. So, you know, mm -hmm. your intent wasn't to get into that investment at the time. Like you made decision. You made a decision based mm -hmm. off of whatever was going on in your life because you felt like those this whatever you was doing was going to get you wherever you needed to be so yeah right. you missed an opportunity but you intentionally did that and i think you know that kind of goes back to you know i'm the one the campaign for this year when you're making these decisions um you know if you have a purpose if you have an intent on them you you should know what you're or expect what you're going to get out of it so the decisions that you make rather than life just happening are the causes of what actually happens and and that's exactly you you mentioned the i'm the one campaign and living with intent is look i am intentionally going to put the responsibility of decisions and outcome on myself right 
So I'm not going to wait around for somebody else to make a decision for me, or I'm not going to wait around for some miracle or some sign from somebody else. I'm going to go ahead and start making moves on, on what I think is the right path and what I think is the next logical step for me, um, as opposed to somebody else. So I, I think a lot of people live with hope yep. as opposed to living with intent. And you can hope for something to happen or you can intend on it happening. And when you intend on it happening, then you now align yourself for the path that you need to go. Now, don't get me wrong. You know, there's always the 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 shortest distance to a point is a straight line. Most people think that's how their life should be. But living with intent means that, hey, even if that straight line ends up in a curve or I have to make a U-turn or a figure eight or whatever it is I'm going to do, I intend on getting through it and getting to that ultimate goal, that destination, whatever that is that I'm trying to do. That's, that's, man, that's, that is the head on. How many times have you thought about yourself, got, gotten lost and say, no, let me go back to where I started again. And this time I'm going to go the opposite way. That's the, the same factor. Like you sometimes got to go backwards and move forward. It's okay to take two steps back to go forward. If you're doing the right, if you're doing it for the right reasons to move past where you are. Yeah. And I also think how you talked about living with hope. I think a lot of people live, you know, with, you know, in some instances with the expect, expectation that, oh, it'll happen for me at a later time. Like I can always go back and get it. And I'll use my relationship as an example because uh, my lady now, we had known each other probably upwards of six or seven years before we actually got officially together. And a lot of that had to do with distance, but also a lot of it had to do with, you know, me and, you know, my intent on how I wanted to live my life at the time. You know, I wasn't really about a committed relationship at the time because of the distance and then and a, and a bunch of other factors. But this woman was very intent on the fact that we were supposed to be together. And she she's very spiritual in that. Right. And she knew it at a very, very early stage, I guess, of our friendship, courtship, whatever ship. Um, and it it almost took. I won't say it almost took. I almost lost out on probably the one on, on one of the best things that ever happened to me because I I didn't take the or I wasn't intent on being with her at a specific time. But once I made that decision, it made life just so much easier and we were able to come together and be great together. But I had to make that actual decision and you know find that intent to get there. So like what you just said about uh, it may oh, first of all congratulations that's dope. Um, <laughs> what you just said about <laughs> what you just said about uh, it made life easier. I think that's something that um, because I, I think that like I really believe that you know you like how Carol said you get aligned with what you're trying to do. So it made life easier because you let go of what you thought you know what I mean and just kind of like let what what you what was supposed to happen happen. Right. You know, you got aligned with, you know, like, I guess, you know, if you want to say the universe or however, however you have you, but, um, and I think that in that inner peace comes about a situation, that's how you know that you're going in the right direction. Yeah. And if you think about it, what, what is it that created that hesitance for you, Brett? Uh, what, what is it that didn't immediately allow you to be like, yes, I see this? Man. A lot of things, man, maturity, um, external factors and, you know, me, <laughs> me being in Miami and being able to live, you know, sort of a, a fantastic life or a fantasy type of life. You know, I don't think most people realize that you get that opportunity sometimes when you're in certain environments. So I, it it blurred my vision to what was, I guess, most important or what would have been most important in my lifetime. Right. So let's use the optometrist as an example, right? Right. So when you go to get your eyes checked, they don't give you a paragraph and say, read this paragraph, right? Mm -hmm. They say, hey, can you read these letters? And you read one letter at a time, mm -hmm. right? But some of some of us treat life like, like a paragraph, uh, which is five sentences or more. <laughs> <laughs> you were wondering, hey, that. strike! That's 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 one win in in the column of of B Jones. Right. <laughs> Some of us treat life like a paragraph, or or worst case, 
with all of the things that are out there now, it's almost like an essay, and you can't you can't focus on that one letter right. to see clearly what that letter is, right? So it's an E, but I, but I can't even see that it's an E because of everything that's around it, and that's what ha- what derails people from living with intent because there are so many options out there for you right. that you just you just get scattered, and and it's almost like a shotgun blast where you know you get shrapnel going all over the place and you never really get to what it was you really wanted so once you had determined and you were able to block out the distractions from you realizing this wonderful relationship that you had in front of you you everything kind of started to fall in right so you lived with the intention then my intent was look i'm going to devote my life to this other person and once you aligned with where she already was, now you all are moving together harm- harm- harmoniously. Exactly. 80%, 80% of the time, right? <laughs> so. We're going to skip over that. No, we're not going to skip that. That's life, though. We're not going to skip that. That's life. That's yeah. life. It's, it's, it's never going to be perfect. And that's what I want people to no, understand. No. That's why I said that. People need to understand that just because you decide you're going to live with intent, that doesn't mean that you're not going to encounter obstacles and you're not going to encounter potholes, roadblocks, whatever it might be. But if your intention is so dedicated and if you are so focused, those things aren't going to matter. You're going to get through them. You're going to realize that they're just another another thing in the road that's going to prepare you for something else. Exactly. So, I mean, that brings me back to, you know, my first point that when things happen, it's because of certain sequence of events, you know, like it's the decisions that you make. So you can't you can't say that, you know, I'm just a product of my environment or this is just how things are because they are. No, it's not that it's it's you. The common denominator in all of these situations is you and the decision that you make to whether to whether or not you are going to live with certain intent. Now, that means you do have to define the intent that you want to live with. So whether it's getting out of, you know, a certain living situation, whether it's getting a certain promotion, whether it's getting to the gym and staying there until March so you can uh, bug the heck out of phase on when you have that intent, (laughs) you will you will get to that, get to achieving that goal. And and, and I want to go back. And if you will allow me to, I want to change something you just said. You said that you are the common denominator. And I would like to put out there that, no, you're the unique denominator of everything that you come in contact with because you have the opportunity to affect the outcome of everything that you involve yourself with. So for the purposes of I am the one, you need to realize that you are the unique denominator. If you're a common denominator, that means that you could be interchangeable right? because you're common, which is synonymous with average. And see, that's why he's a speaker, man. You know, I, you know, I throw out the the nugget, and he'll he'll refine it and turn it into a Chick Fil A, you know, great piece of chicken. Chicken, chicken. <laughs> hey, we trying to take Southwest salad. Oh, not to get off. You know, anyway. Uh, so, um, <laughs> it's not so only guys. We're still hungry. Avocado a lot. Anyway, the, uh, but uh, going back to what you said with the series of events, man, because I, I think that a lot of people. Um, one, okay, so with the, the previous podcast that we did, I think two, maybe two podcasts ago, uh, you posed the question of, is it one single event that's like life defining or is it you know a series of events? And I think that it definitely is a series because any any event in your life, even if you think, oh, this was the event that changed my life, there's always going to be those events prior to that ultimately led up to that. And you got to you gotta look at, okay, what are the events that led me here and how can I live with the intent, you know, to get out of this situation and keep moving forward to the direction I want to go. Because sometimes you can live with the intent and going in the wrong direction. Like how you said you was living in Miami, your intent was to live this lifestyle, this, you know, fabulous, glorious lifestyle. But ultimately where you should have been was with your lady. So your intent was in the direction of, it wasn't in line where you wanted to go, where ultimately you should be going. But when you change that intent, you like you said, everything became a lot easier. But to his point he also talked about environment and it's not to say that you can't live with that intent and get positive outcomes um based on your environment but i give you an example so this morning we turn on the news and for all intents and purposes we're here for something very positive and we plan on having a positive experience this weekend but story after story this morning it was murder death 
kill, tragedy, robbery, robbery, <laughs> rape. I mean, just one after the other. The most positive thing was people wearing these old hats, these large, you know, like church hats. That was the most positive thing. Welcome to the South. And, and, right. That was the most positive thing out, out of the, the hour that we probably watched the news this morning. And it was just like, man, if, if you if you live in this area, like, can you you can't turn on the news in the morning and, and that's reinforcing your positive energy, positive outlook of how your day is going to go. So I would almost, you know, not almost uh, there. It is definitely you have to be intentional about the things that you allow into your surroundings. The things that are going to affect you because you may not even realize that subconsciously these things are, are penetrating you and they're changing you know your level of production or your level of commitment to your intent and uh two quick things i want to throw out there so two quick shout outs one to uh the team at dc fox 5 always positive thank you for that when i was there and then shout out to the pix 11 team here in New York, New Jersey. Great news, great positivity in the morning. So I appreciate that. Um, but uh, it's, it's, it's great to see that because people's perception, whatever they see in the morning is what they live their life through. So you, you, you tend to wake up, you're having a, a good morning, you wake up, you turn TV on and things happen. Or if your wife all of a sudden changes your mood set, that's now affecting you through your entire day. And until something changes, something else that brings a positive light into your mindset you're going to live that route so that road you might take that second that two roads diverge you may be going left the whole time because that one instance that in the beginning of the morning made you turn the opposite way um so it's just it's just an important fact that the environment also adds into that intent where you are and how you control what you do in that environment and this would be a great time for us to plug if anybody would like sponsorship opportunities please email info at fledgeology.com <laughs> We have sponsorship opportunities available for this podcast. So Fox, you got a shout out. Chick-fil-A, you got a shout out. So feel free. University of Miami, we're always, you know, always looking for those opportunities. Take it. Yes. Yes. Mar Marvel. I think Marvel was mentioned. Oh yeah, Marvel oh, yeah. was mentioned. Oh yeah. <laughs> and, and Lee, Disney. Ecology.com. <laughs> if you have a problem. If you have a problem with Fledgeology, we'll just uh, tell you the way that people pronounce it when they see us. Fledge-e-ology. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, man, living on purpose, man, not on accident. You know, live with intent, intentionally, intentionally surround yourself with the right people. Make your decisions based on a positive intent. And if you have seen yourself going down a negative road or you're just not going in the direction that you feel like you should be going in, like Faison said, stop take a step back regroup take that moment to reflect so that way you can redirect your intention and get to that leap that's going to take you to that purpose-driven life i think that uh, a big part of it is uh, also like knowing what you want you know whether it be uh you know business relationship goals you know fitness goals whatever the case may be because you can't really have a direction What's the saying with the whole, like, you know, you can't hit a target if you can't see it or something like that. So uh, I think a big part of living with intent is like defining what it is you want to do, whether with, like with your life, whether it be on one small aspect or your life as a whole. And then you can, I think you can actually live with more of intent because you understand now this is what I want to do. So now I have a better understanding of what I have to do in order to get to that place. But there's, and I think you're about to jump in, K with this one, but... Uh... <laughs> old saying and, and this is old because this has passed on since probably biblical times but you gotta live with the end in the intent so if you know where you're going at the end i think carol's mentioned this several times through several podcasts and live speaking that whenever you're starting your goal what's your end target and if you know where you're going to end then you know how you gotta you know we bob and weave to get to that point exactly yeah. right but to take that further or to take a step back from that you can't do that until you know who you are who are you and until you know who you are it's going to be hard for you to live with intent because you don't know the things that you need to do to continue to grow 
yourself as a person, right? You, you won't really know what you need. So until you really know who you are, you don't know if you're capable of getting where you're trying to get to. Once you know who you are, then you can live with that intent because you realize, okay, this is who I am. So I can now do this, right? Because if you don't know who you are, you're going to easily get distracted. Yeah. yeah. You're going to get distracted because you're going to see other things out there. You're going to think, oh, that's for me. Oh, this is for me. When really, once you discover who you are, those external influences have a lot less likelihood of, of influencing you and throwing you off track. While I have everybody's attention, man, I want to remind you to please subscribe. Subscribe and comment on the 13th floor. We're on iTunes. We're on Google Play. We're on uh, Blog Talk Radio. So YouTube and SoundCloud. Go leave comments, like our Facebook page. You can get connected with Fledgeology at Fledgeology on Facebook, at Fledgeology on Instagram. As Carol said before, any type of questions or say you want us to want to bring us to an event info at fledgeology.com you will get a response a timely response uh so yeah get connected with us subscribe to the podcast leave your comments suggestions anything you want to hear us talk about or if you just have questions about the marvel universe i'm sure carol and, and Faison can definitely be your experts on that <laughs> I got a long list of people behind me who helped support me in that uh that <laughs> information so i'll get you the answer <laughs> yeah man we covered a lot today guys we had uh carol before we go i know we usually let you get the last word did you have something for the day brett i, I do have a message i want to leave with the people i want to make sure that this part is highlighted there are many people out there and you are dedicating the majority of your life to somebody else's goal somebody else's dream and you are making other people just wealthy and when i say wealthy i don't mean from a monetary standpoint, but I mean from a quality of life standpoint, you're adding to other people's wealth. You need to find a way to start adding some of that time into your own development, into your own wealth, your own life enjoyment, your life satisfaction. And the first step, as we said, is for you to one, find out who you are. Once you find out who you are, you can now start living your life with intent. We want you to get to the point where you are investing in yourself and you're adding into yourself. And as I said, it's not a monetary thing, but it's a, it's a, it's a spiritual thing where your spirit and your soul deserve that investment and it deserves that opportunity to, to grow and to flourish. And through that growth, you'll now be able to help others. But we want you to start with you and we want you to do that because you are the one. And I want you to start out every day before you leave your house stand in your mirror for about 10 seconds and repeatedly say, I am the one, I am the one. And the last thing you will say is I am the one and I am enough. Easy, easy. Great show guys, man. There it is. I like to thank all of you out there for listening. Like I said before, please subscribe, leave comments, 13th floor, uh, at Fledgeology, check us out. But there it is, ladies and gentlemen, thank you all for listening on the 13th floor where the furniture isn't always the best, but the views are amazing. Now is your time to flinch.